Hello everyone and welcome to Eve University's Introduction to LOSAC Mechanics. I am Professor Akademiak. I joined Eve University in Eve in 2014 and I'm a long time teacher and junior FC taking out new B-friendly fleets, but most importantly a LOSAC pirate. Yar. And throughout my career something that constantly keeps coming up is low security space and its complex mechanics. And to be fair, these mechanics are complicated and even veteran sometimes forget some of them and make mistakes and that's also true for most things in EVE generally. So with a lot of support from the teaching department and the FC team at EVE University I designed this class to go over low sec basics, what's unique about that space and mainly how to thrive there as a pilot and a pirate maybe. So I'll talk about security status, system versus personal, I'll talk about criminal actions, crime and consequences whether they are short-term, long-term, or even immediate. I'll talk about faction warfare, space mechanics, and how those unique mechanics provide a lot of opportunity for PvP in LOSEC. And finally, I will talk about typical capsuleers' behaviors and, and habits in LOSEC and what to expect, what to hunt, and so on. And also some of the unique NPCs that you will only find in LOSEC space. So let's get started. We all start our EVE careers somewhere at the center of New Eden, a galaxy of more than 5400 star systems. That center is occupied by the four main factions, Amar, Kaldari, Galente, and Minmatar. These empires have faction police to secure their space and are also supported by an independent organization called Concord that punishes any capsuleer who breaks the law in that space. And that space is more or less surrounded by a region called LOSEC, aka low security space. And as the name indicates, in that space security is lower. And in that space, security is limited only to sentry, gate, and station guns, which makes it a hotspot for pirate activity. And in turn, LOSEC is surrounded by NULSEC. First, we have NPC occupied NULSEC or null security space, which is also more or less surrounded by player owned null security space or NULSEC. And in that space, no one can hear you scream. There are no securities, no police, no Concord. You're all on your own. So crime doesn't have any consequences in null security space or in wormhole space, which exists in a separate galaxy called Anoikis. So think of New Eden as a set of concentric circles with high sec in the middle and the further away you go from the core, the lower the security of the system gets. System security is given a rating from 1 to negative 1, with 1 being the most secure and negative 1 being the least secure. High sec system rating starts at 0.5 and goes all the way up to 1.0 and that value simply represents how fast Concord is able to respond to aggressors. So if someone is breaking the law and attacking you, you have a higher chance of surviving in 1.0 systems simply because Concord is able to warp to you and kill the aggressors more quickly. Low sec system ratings goes from 0.1 to 0.4 and that really doesn't impact the sentry guns. That value simply represents how hard the NPCs are to kill. So the higher the value, the easier the NPCs are to kill. This is exactly the same in high sec. So the higher the system rating in high sec, the easier the NPCs are to kill. And finally, null sec system ratings go from negative one all the way to 0.0. And similarly, the number just represents how hard the NPCs are to kill. You can find out the security rating of the system you're currently in by looking at the top left of your screen. If you don't see it, make sure that you have the system info that looks like a little sun have that icon activated. System security status is also indicated by the system color, whether on the map or at the top left of your screen or on your route panel if you set a destination. High sec goes from blue through teal down to yellow. Then low sec is indicated by an orange or a brownish color that gets more red as you go further down the security rating. And finally, null sec is indicated by red. System security impacts what we can and cannot do in space. And it's important to distinguish between things that we can do but have consequences, like crime, versus actions that we cannot do at all to begin with. Committing a crime anywhere in high sec will have deadly consequences. This includes inside security missions in dead space pockets or generally in space, like at asteroid belts or planets. This is not the case in low sec, where Concord is non-existent. So if 
if you get killed in a mission, there are really no immediate consequences. There is no Concord response in space. But the aggressor will still get some sort of consequences, whether short term or long term. However, if a crime takes place on a station or at a gate, there are station and gate sentry guns that immediately respond to crime, whether in high sec or in low sec. In low sec, of course, there are fewer guns, so only two guns per station or gate. So crime is possible, but with consequences in high sec and low sec. However, the rest of the table describes actions that are not possible in EVE, depending on the system, of course. And this stuff might be a little too advanced, I'll cover them anyway, but feel free to skip or don't be intimidated. Pilots cannot deploy warp disruption or web bubbles in high sec or low sec, they can only do that in null sec and wormhole space. And these are launched by interdictors or heavy interdictors or can be anchored by different types of ships. Additionally, capsuleers can only launch bombs in null sec and wormhole space but not in low sec or high sec. And it's important to note that bombs are different from smart bombs. So smart bombs are allowed in any region of space and they fit on any ship, but they're typically found on battleships, while bombs are launched only by stealth bombers. Also, when it comes to deploying capital and super capital ships, we can do that in low sec, null sec, and normal space. We cannot do that in high sec, with some exceptions like redeeming a reimbursed capital ship in high sec, but you can only fly it out of high sec. You can't really use it in high sec. Or just fly it around in high sec and look pretty without being able to use it. Finally, capsuleers can deploy sinusoidal fields or sinos in low sec and null sec. They cannot light these sinos in high sec or wormhole space. Sinos are sort of beacons that some ships are able to lock onto, like black ops, battleships, or capital ships, and jump freighters. And they allow these ships to jump, bypassing gates uh, directly to the sino. Or if it's a Titan, it can bridge other ships through the Titan and directly portal them to the sino. Alright, so we briefly talked about crime and punishment or consequences, and there are basically three types of consequences. First, there is the long-term consequence, which is the pilot's own personal security status. And this is a security rating that is assigned to a pilot, not to a system, but interacts with the security rating of systems. Second, there are short-term consequences, and these come in the form of timers, different types of timers, with different effects. And finally, there are immediate consequences, and these come in the form of response from Concord or station or sentry guns. And as mentioned before, crime does not have any consequence in null security space or wormhole space or Pajvan, with the exception of the limited engagement timer, which applies everywhere. And we're going to expand on these aspects, especially as related to low security space. So let's start with the long term consequences because they're the least complex. Every pilot has their own personal security status log. And just like Santa, Concord looks at that log to see whether a pilot has been good or naughty. And not just Concord, but also faction police. Every time a pilot kills an NPC from one of the criminal organizations like Angel Cartel, Blood Raiders, Garistas, or others, they're performing a good deed from Concord and Empire perspective and thus they are rewarded with additional security status points. On the other hand, every time a pilot commits a crime, they lose some security status points. And all these points are tallied to determine a pilot's security status. So if a pilot has been a pirate and have been naughty for long enough and their security status goes below zero, they will start facing the long-term consequences of their criminal behavior. First off, at zero and below, a pilot will get a little yellow skull called Banana by EVE players next to their name in local and on the overview, which just indicates that a pilot has been naughty but has no actual effect. But most importantly, they will start getting attacked by faction police depending on their security rating and the security rating of the system they're in. So capsuleers will start getting attacked in 1.0 system in high sec by faction police if their security status is between 0.0 and negative 2. 
And if Capsuleer's security status drops further and hits negative 2 or is between negative 2 and negative 2.5, they will start getting attacked by faction police in 0.9 and 1.0 system. And that keeps going down and down until they are attacked in 0.5 systems by faction police at negative 4 or below. And that means they are attacked by faction police anywhere they go in high security space. And here's where it gets a little bit more dicey. At negative 5 or below, pilots become permaflashy or outlaw. They get an orange call that is flashing and indicates to everyone in local that they are a legal target, which, which means any pilot in space have the right to shoot at and kill that capsuleer without any consequences, without Concord interference, for example. And later, we'll talk about how pilots can fix their security rating or status when we discuss low security space unique NPCs. Now let's talk about the short-term consequences of crime, which is criminal and suspect timers and other timers as well. And for this, it is important to distinguish between two levels of crime. One level is called suspect, and the other level that is more severe and is called criminal. And the same action could be considered suspect in one region of space, but considered criminal in another region of space. So for example, if you shoot at a pilot who is not a legal target in low security space, that is a suspect behavior. However, if you shoot at a pilot that is not a legal target in high sec space, that is considered criminal and Concord will come and destroy you. So if you commit a suspect level crime, you get a suspect timer for 15 minutes and you can see that at the top left of your screen and you get a yellow flashing skull next to your name in local and on the overview. And with that, you become a legal target and high sec and low sec and anyone can attack you without consequences, without Concord interference or without gate gun interference and without losing security status etc but to make it fair for you and to allow you to defend yourself you get a limited engagement timer with anyone shooting you that is specific to that pilot that allows you to shoot back without any additional consequences and we'll expand more on limited engagement timer in a moment now if you commit a criminal behavior like for example killing someone's pod in low security space or activating your micro jump field generator in low security space you get a red criminal timer that lasts for 15 minutes and you get a red flashy skull next to your name in local and the overview and just like the suspect timer the criminal timer allows anyone to shoot you anywhere in space legally you become a legal target anyone can attack you without any consequences and again if someone does you get a specific limited engagement timer with the aggressor for five minutes that allows you to defend yourself against anyone who is shooting at you without any further consequences but the criminal timer also means that if you are in or jump into high security space during that timer concord will immediately engage and destroy your ship so yes, if you destroyed a pod 14 minutes ago in low security space and then jump into high sec, you will be conquered. And it is also very important to note that logistics ships or healers will inherit those timers if they heal, aka repair, someone who is suspect or criminal and they themselves get the timer as well. So it's getting a bit complicated. What if you don't know exactly what actions are suspect or criminal, if at all, and how that varies by different regions of space? Well, luckily you don't have to memorize everything and your ship has a safety setting that you can set that prevents you from committing crime inadvertently. You can find that setting at the top left of your shield and capacitor area on your heads up display. And it has three settings. First, the enable safety or green setting that prevents both suspect and criminal activity. That way you can't commit any crime at all, not even by accident. And the second setting is the partial safety that allows you to go suspect and do suspect level criminal activity, like shooting illegal targets in low sight, but prevents you from going criminal by committing criminal level activities like shooting pods in low sec or illegal targets in high sec, which makes it a good setting if you're going pirating in low sec and looking for targets to kill. And finally, the obvious disable safety settings that allows all actions 
actions and does not prevent you from committing any crime, whether suspect or criminal, and it's typically used for suicide ganking, or if you really want to kill capsules in low sec. There are many timers in EVE, and we talked about the suspect and criminal timers, but I also want to expand a little on some relevant timers. The first timer that we already mentioned is the limited engagement timer. It is a 5 minute timer that is triggered when any pilot engages any other pilot in any region of space, regardless of whether or not there are consequences. And this is simply to give anyone under attack a chance to defend themselves, without incurring any consequences themselves, since they're obviously the victims here. And you can see that timer indicated by the two swords and the teal color at the top left of your screen. And also you can identify anyone with a limited engagement timer against you by the flashy teal skull that appear next to their name in local or on the overview. And by the way, that only appears between the two specific pilots that are fighting, but not to anyone else in the system. So one example would be if I am a suspect and you decide to shoot me in high sec space and you are neutral to me, I really can't do anything about it. I can't shoot back because if I shoot you back, I will go criminal and Concord will destroy me. However, because of that limited engagement timer, that gives me a chance to shoot back at you without any consequences consequences and without Concord involvement. And it also incentivizes other types of PvP like in wormhole space by preventing people from just jumping wormholes into high sec and avoiding fights. With limited engagement you can follow and pursue into high sec and because of the limited engagement timer you can shoot again, continue the fight without Concord involvement. But that's a discussion for another class. Another very important and relevant timer is the weapons timer. It is a one minute timer that is triggered by you activating any aggression module on any other capsuleer. Whether it's a scram, a web, or a sensor dampener, or a hybrid weapon, or a laser weapon, or a missile, or whatever. And that timer will keep resetting with every new cycle of your gun or your aggression module. So as long as you keep applying that aggression module to someone, your timer stays almost at one minute give or take until you decide to decycle your guns and then the cooldown starts and the timer starts to count down. So one important example of that is that if you are having a fight with someone on a gate in low sec and you feel like the fight is not going your way you can't simply just jump the gate because you have a weapons timer so you have to decycle your guns wait a minute and see if you survive then you can jump the gate. And lastly, the capsuleer log off timer, which is five minutes, and that is triggered by any engagement with any other capsuleer. And that simply prevents you from logging off safely and prevents your ship from cloaking after the emergency warp if you decide to log off or turn off your client. So the ship would still be available in space for anyone to scan down and destroy, just simply preventing capsuleers from cowering or running away from fights. Okay, so we talked about crimes long-term consequences like security status and short-term consequences like timers. But what about the immediate consequences? Well, there are no immediate consequences in low security space unless crime happens on a station or near a gate. In high sec, crime can happen anywhere and the response would be Concord and, and if the crime also happened to be on a station or a gate, there are also sentry guns that would immediately respond. While in low sec, crime can also happen anywhere, but since there is no Concord, there is no immediate response unless the crime happens on a station or a gate. And in low sec, each station and each gate is defended by two sentry guns. And these guns pack quite a punch, especially against frigates and destroyers. So let's examine their stats. Each gun has a 500 km optimal range and 50 km fall off. So they're quite snipey, especially that most fights happen very close around gates. Additionally, their volley damage is 440 and their DPS is 176 per gun. So you multiply that by 2 for both guns, which means most frigates and destroyers can't really tank them alone without sufficient logistics, aka healing ships or logi. And I'm sure what I just said will incentivize some people to prove me wrong and create some fits for frigates and destroyers that would tank gay guns really well. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to seeing those. But for your average run-of-the-mill frigate or desi, that is too much damage. 
and the damage type distribution of 80 EM 140 thermal means that it is difficult to shield tank them while 80 kinetic 140 explosive means it's equally difficult to armor tank them so no type of tank is really superior in tanking those guns also, the tracking speed is relatively high, which means you can't really speed tank it by just moving quickly and avoiding getting hit by the shots. So simply put, they are a force to be reckoned with, especially for new players. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey professor, you said low sec mechanics are complicated and that you're gonna help us with it, but you bombarded us with all this information and we really don't know what to do with all of that. And you're right, it is really difficult to just discuss all of this stuff in abstract form. So fear not my students, for I'm about to integrate all of these mechanics into one example that will help you grasp the concepts and see them all work together in concert. So an incursus, a coercer, and a stabber warp onto a gate in low sec. That's not the setup for a lame joke, but for a lame gate camp, just because it's quite the odd mix. So these boys and girls are staying on the gate, waiting for anything juicy to come in for them to kill. And when you look at that, they heard the gate flash, they saw the flash, they waited for the cloak timer to run out, and they saw a juicy scorpion decloaking far enough from the gate. And it is neutral, so it is considered an illegal target, yet they still want to kill it. So just for the purposes of this example, the incursus and the coercer decide to engage the scorpion, but the stabber has second thoughts and they engage. So we'll use the time stone and pause time right here to see what happens in that exact moment because a lot's gonna happen. So the aggressors, in that case the incursors and coercer, hear that beautiful aura message. Your security status has been lowered. And there you go, that's a long-term consequence of their aggression. They lost a few security points. Now let's unpack the short-term consequences, aka timers, in no particular order, because they're all triggered simultaneously at the same time by that aggression. So the first timer is the capsuleer log-off timer, and that means that the incursus, coercer, and scorpion cannot simply just log off to avoid the fight. The second timer is the weapons timer, and that goes only to the incursus and coercer and prevents them from taking the gate or docking up. So if they want to take that gate that they're sitting on, they have to decycle their guns, wait one minute to be able to jump that gate. And if they try to warp off and dock up, that's the message that they're going to hear. Docking request denied. So they can neither tether nor dock up until that timer runs out. That timer, however, does not apply to the stabber nor the scorpion because neither of them had activated any aggression module yet. The next timer is the limited engagement timer. And there are two sets of timers that will manifest here. Remember that the limited engagement timer allows aggression between two specific pilots and does not impact how anyone else in the system perceives the legality of those two pilots. So the first set of timers is going to be between the incursus and the scorpion. They can engage each other now consequence free. The second timer is specifically between the coercer and the scorpion and again they can engage each other consequence free. So the scorpion gets two limited engagement timers and the incursus gets one, the coercer gets one. So can the stabber attack any of those now legally? No, because they're not flashy to the stabber, they're flashy to each other, but not flashy from the perspective of the stabber. Same thing between the incursus and the coercer, they are not legal target to each other even though they have limited engagement timers because each of their timers is directly with the scorpion, so they're still considered illegal targets to each other. And last but not least, the suspect timer. The incursus and the coercer each get a 15 minute suspect timer, which makes them legal targets for anyone in EVE, including the scorpion and the stabber, who is not involved, or anyone else for that matter. Now what about the immediate consequence of that aggression? Well, the fight happens to be on a stargate, which means there are two sentry guns around the stargate, that will immediately get angry and start targeting the aggressors to punish them for their crimes. So how will those guns decide which aggressor to shoot first or will they shoot them both? Well, sentry guns can shoot one target at a time and they will alternate between the incursus and the coercer, starting with the pilot that committed the first aggression, and in that case it's the incursus. And both guns will keep shooting at the incursus until one of three things happen. 
First, they will keep shooting at the incursors until 30 seconds have passed. Then they will switch to the coercer for another 30 seconds. Then they will switch back to the incursors and so on. But like I said, desis and frigates are quite squishy compared to sentry guns and they wouldn't last 30 seconds. Which brings us to the next option where the guns will keep shooting at the incursus until it dies, probably way before the 30 seconds had passed, and then move on to the coercer, and they both will keep shooting at the coercer and will not switch because there are no other criminals on grid at the time. The guns will not target a capsule, so if the incursus dies, they will not shoot that pilot's capsule. They will simply switch to the coercer. The third option would be if the incursus pilot is smart, prepared, and or paying attention. So if she notices that she's being attacked by the guns, she could start aligning out to prepare to warp off. So she could choose to warp off to any random celestial, like that Stargate over there, or if she's even better prepared, she could have created a tactical bookmark or a bounce point on grid so she doesn't have to warp that far away. And right here I'm gonna insert a shameless plug to our introduction to bookmarks class at EVE University, which I also sometimes deliver. So if she's successful at warping off before being destroyed by the sentry guns, the sentry guns will immediately switch to the coercer as soon as she initiates warp. And if she's even smarter and better prepared, she would have been pre-aligned to that bookmark before aggressing the scorpion. So she can immediately warp as soon as she's aggressed by the guns. And as soon as she lands at the bookmark, she can warp back and continue engaging the scorpion. And guess what? Now the sentry guns will not consider the incursus a criminal anymore because this time the incursus has a limited engagement timer with the scorpion. So when it aggresses it, she's not breaking any laws. The station and gate sentry guns forget about criminals as soon as they warp off and will not remember them when they warp back. And in this case, the guns will keep shooting at the coercer and will not switch back to the incursus. And they will keep doing that until someone else breaks the law or the coercer dies or warps off so let's say the stabber now joins in and starts shooting at the scorpion now the stabber will get the same timers that we discussed and now the sentry guns will wait 30 seconds before switching to the stabber and similarly they will start switching back and forth between the two criminals on grid until one of the three things happen to the coercer stabber or both so we still haven't discussed the scorpion's reaction to all of this. At this point, the scorpion has two options, either to engage and shoot back or to try to make it to that gated jump or to warp off, of course, if it's not tackled, but it's most probably going to be tackled. If it shoots back, then it forfeits its right to jump the Stargate because it's going to get a weapons timer. So it loses that option and is now committed 100% to the fight. Again, unless it chooses to decycle its guns, survive for one minute, then jump the gate. But it will not suffer any consequences for fighting back because the three aggressors have limited engagement timers with the Scorpion and also they are now all suspect. So from the Scorpion's perspective, they're all legal targets. But let's rewind back and assume that the stabber hadn't aggressed the scorpion yet. To explore what happens in a scenario that is all too common. The scorpion realizes it's being attacked and the pilot freaks out. And he doesn't pay attention to which ship exactly on grid is shooting and which is not. And he starts targeting all ships on grid and shooting at them. Or he starts targeting everything and pre-activating his missiles. And because the stabber is the biggest ship on grid and thus has the biggest signature radius, which means it's going to be locked first, the pre-activated missiles will shoot at the stabber. Or regardless of what happened exactly, but just the fact that the scorpion shot at the stabber is the problem. For this to happen, remember that the scorpion needs to have his ship safety settings at least to yellow or red, because otherwise the ship safety settings would prevent that. But anyways, the scorpion attacks the stabber. Now, notice that the stabber is not a legal target for the scorpion, which now means that the scorpion is also breaking the law and now a criminal, and the scorpion gets suspect timers, weapons timers, limited engagement, all the good stuff, and can jump the gate, and now the stabber can shoot back without consequence, and the scorpion will take extra damage from the gate guns when they're so desperately trying to survive that gate camp. 
So I hope this example showed you a little bit how all of these mechanics work together in concert and all of this happens in a split second on a fight in low sec, gets your heart pumping and your mind racing and it's quite the challenge and it's so much fun. And with experience, you will learn how to apply that to your advantage. So come to our newbie friendly fleets, get experience, make mistakes, and eventually you will get the hang of this. Don't be intimidated by low sec. Now let's talk about something else that is very unique to low security space, which is faction warfare. The Amar Empire is at war with the Minmatar Republic, and the Kaldari State is at war with the Galente Federation. The Amar and Kaldari are supporting each other, and the Minmatar and Galente are supporting each other. And thus there are two war zones of low security space that are contested between the factions. And you can check those out on .LAN maps or other third party tools. And in these low security regions, there are corporations that have chosen to join one of the factions and fight on their behalf. So some of these player corporations join the Galente militia, for example, or Galmel, and others may choose to join the Kaldari militia or Kalmel, and thus those two player corporations are now at war with each other. But not only that, but their pilots compete to capture systems in low security space for their faction and ally. And the way this works is that a system starts by being stable in the hands and in control of one faction, and it will spawn dead space areas called faction complexes, or plexus for short, not to be confused with the pilot license plexus. And faction warfare pilots from the opposing faction or their allies try to attack these complexes and make the system more vulnerable. So they start contesting these systems and making them more and more vulnerable by attacking those plexus and when the system becomes vulnerable they then can attack a structure called the IHOB or infrastructure hub to capture that system and after downtime that means the system is lost and it turns to the other opposing faction so if it was Minmatar then it was being contested by the Amar or Kaldari and thus transfers to the Amar Empire and these systems keep changing hands back and forth which makes them great regions for PvP and while Eve University is a neutral organization, which means that we can't take sides in this war, we are still equal opportunity offenders and we are happy to go seek PvP in those areas. And plexes are great spots for PvP, but they have some special mechanics that pilots need to be aware of. So faction warfare complexes, or plexes for short, are considered dead space pockets and cosmic anomalies. And by cosmic anomalies, I mean that they appear on the probe scanner window by default, and that they're green sites, so you don't have to scan them down. You can just simply immediately warp to them. But they do not appear on overviews until someone initiates warp to a plex. Then it pops up on everyone's overview in the system. So if you jump into a system and find some plexes on your overview, that means that someone had already initiated warp to these plexes. And I keep saying initiated because you don't actually have to warp to the plex in order for it to appear on everybody's overview. You can simply initiate the warp and press control space and cancel the warp and that would still make the plex appear on everybody's overview. So if you're in a low sec faction warfare system and suddenly see a plex pop up on your overview, that means one of two things, either someone pre-activated it and just trolling, or there's actually someone warping to that plex. So you can de-scan it down and check for yourself. And right here, I'm gonna insert another shameless plug for our introduction to de-scan class at Eve University, which is also a class that I sometimes deliver. And these classes are completely public, so you don't have to be a member of Eve University, although you love you to be a member of Eve University, but you can still attend those classes even if you're not. But back to faction warfare plexes, they're also considered dead space pockets as I mentioned. And what that means is that there will always be an acceleration gate unless it's one specific type of plex which I'll mention in a bit. And because they're dead space pockets, that means that your warp in point will always be that acceleration gate, regardless of what you choose to warp to on grid. So let's say you warp to the plex from your probe scanner window or your overview, you will land at the acceleration gate. 
gate. Or let's say that you have a fleet member that is outside the acceleration gate, let's say at 100 kilometers or 200 kilometers away from the acceleration gate, and you choose to warp to that fleet mate, you will still land at the acceleration gate. Let's say that there's a fleet member who took the acceleration gate and warped inside, and you decide to warp to them, you will still land at the acceleration gate. Let's say that you do have a bookmark inside or outside of that space pocket, and you choose to warp to that bookmark, you will still land at the acceleration gate. And I'm being repetitive and I'm hammering this point because this is where a lot of EVE University new players lose their ships because they think they can warp to stuff or they pursue an enemy thinking that they can get support from their fleet mates but realize that their fleet mates will land at the acceleration gate instead of them and they have no support. And it's also important to note that when I say warp to and land at the acceleration gate I'm assuming the warp to is at zero but let's say you warp to at range let's say it warp to at 100 or at 50 to any of these destinations like the plex a fleet member a bookmark whatever you will land at 100 or 50 or whatever range you choose from the acceleration gate from the direction relative to which you work from so if you were warping at 100 from a stargate to the plex you will land at 100 kilometers away from the acceleration gate and the plex in line with the direction of the stargate and this sometimes makes the scouts rule and these plexes very important and very fun for trying to manually pilot and get a warp in on an enemy that is kiting away from the acceleration gate. But it's also important to note that you cannot do the same inside the dead space pocket like once you take the acceleration gate because there is no warp in inside the dead space pocket. Your fleet mates will always land outside. So let's talk about going inside those faction warfare plexes. First of all, you need to be very close to the acceleration gate, at least 2500 meters, and then you can activate the gate. One common problem is that people warp to that gate at zero and they land in the gate structure and sometimes they get bumped around, losing crucial seconds in delicate PvP situations. So the trick is to warp to the gate at 10, you usually land close enough to be able to activate the gate instantly without being within the structure and bump around. Activating that gate instantly gives you a suspect timer, which is great for PvP because anybody sliding that gate is essentially consenting to PvP and fights because they make themselves a legal target and others can shoot them without consequences. But that means that in order to slide the gate, you have to have your ship security or safety settings set to yellow or red at least to be able to activate it. So once you activate the acceleration gate, you warp and land within around 100,000 kilometers on a warping beacon. That warping beacon is about 10 kilometers away from the capture point of the Plex. And the capture point has a 30 kilometer capture radius in which faction militia need to be within to be able to capture that Plex and make the system more vulnerable. And thus there are three important areas of interest inside the Plex. The first one is the warping beacon. And this is where you expect any pilots coming into the Plex to land, which is great for positioning. So if you're Brawly, you want to stay close. If you're Kaidi, you want to stay far away to be able to fight at your optimal ranges. The other two areas of interest have similar names, but very different properties. They both have the same name as the Plex, but one has a triangular sort of icon and has a radius of 30 kilometers, which is the capture point, basically. And if you try to orbit that at 500, you'll find yourself orbiting at 30 kilometers and 500 meters. And think of it as an invisible sphere of 30 kilometer radius. And because it's an invisible sphere, but you're within it when you're around the capture point, that means you can't really close within the capture point because you're actually close to an object even though it's invisible. So no ships can cloak within the capture radius. The second one has a circular sort of icon and it has a, like a tiny radius. It's good for orbiting and anchoring for brawling doctrines. And another mechanic to note is that because it's a dead space pocket, you cannot actually light sinos inside those pockets. The only way into dead space pocket is through the acceleration gate. And one last thing to note is that there's an NPC inside that is aligned with the faction and killing that NPC will give you significant negative standing with the faction and not just for you but for the entire fleet. So if you're in an EVE University fleet it is good etiquette to not shoot that NPC and generally don't do anything unless the FC directly mentions it. So as you can see, faction plexes are great for PvP because you get to dictate range and be able to fight at your own terms. And also hunt things without having consequences because everybody's flashy. 
In Faction Warfare Plexus, not only can you dictate range, but you can also dictate the size of ships that you want to fight. Because Plexus come in different sizes, and these sizes impose limitations on the maximum size of ships that can slide through the gate. Faction Novice Outposts, or Novices, only allow frigates and Faction Frigates. They do not allow T2 Frigates or larger, they also do not allow Corvettes or Ventures anymore. So if you're in a Frigate Fleet and only want to fight another Frigate Fleet, and are worried that your opponents might upship, then choosing to fight inside a Novice is a good option. Next Smalls only allow Destroyers and Smaller, except Tactical 3 Destroyers. Mediums allow Cruisers and Smaller, except T3Cs, aka Strategic Cruisers. And Large Plexes allow Battleships and Smaller Classes. And finally, Open Plexes, as the name indicates, allow everything. It's unrestricted, you can drop a Titan there if you'd like. But it's important to note that even though that the Open does not have an acceleration gate, all Dead Space mechanics still apply, so there are no Sinos, and you can only warp to the center or beacon not to your fleet members or anything like that. So to wrap up, Faction Warfare is a great place for low sec PvP because it's designed around faction PvP conflict and there are different fleets trying to capture systems from each other and there are third parties like EVE University that likes to go and pick up fights with others and also you get to dictate range that you're fighting in and the maximum size of the opponent. So all around it's a great place to start learning PvP even if you're not directly involved in Faction Warfare at all. So now let's wrap up the class by talking about some of the things that you will find in low sec and let's start with npcs specifically npcs that you can only find in low security space that are unique to low sec and these are called clone soldiers clone soldiers come from different pirate factions depending on the region and they share the pirate faction damage and resist profiles they have different tiers trainer recruiter transporter and negotiator and each one of these tiers spawn at a specific security system level with trainers being found in 0.4 systems recruiter in 0.3 transporter in 0.2 and negotiator in 0.1 security systems they all spawn at asteroid belts randomly and they do a lot of damage they web they scram so new players be advised you can search the uni wiki and different sources for fits to allow you to hunt these clone soldiers and the reason people like to hunt them is because they drop important loot that you can either sell or use yourself to fix your security rating if it's damaged enough so if you've been a bloody pirate and your security rating drops below zero then you can show your goodwill to conquer by exchanging these tags for better security status. And you'll need four trainer tags to go from negative 10 to negative 8, six recruiter tags to go from negative 8 to negative 5, six transporter tags to go from negative 5 to negative 2, and finally four negotiator tags to go from negative 2 to 0. Other things that you'll find in low security space are opponents that you might want to fight or avoid depending on what you're doing. There are some famous low security space systems that are adjacent to high security space systems, especially those close to Jita, like Tama, for example, and those systems are famous for being fight club systems and also famous for having frequent gate camps or PvP fleets looking for fights with convenient reshipping options. There are also a ton of PvP opportunities in faction warfare plexes, whether fighting faction militias or just regular fleets. As I mentioned, plex sizes and mechanics allow aspiring and experienced FCs to control range and control how much foes can upship, which is fantastic for learning PvP and even FCing. And generally in low sec, you might also bump into roaming low security space fleets or faction warfare soloists and fleets as well. There are many pilots that you'll bump into who are honorable soloists, but also remember that this is Eve and sometimes you agree on a fair 1v1 fight and you get dropped by a fleet, so buyers beware. And lastly, you'll find also some juicy targets to kill. So typically you'll find destroyers riding for clone soldiers and NPCs in asteroid belts. You'll also find miners in asteroid belts or ice belts. You'll find epithels around planets set at customs offices specifically. And you'll find industrials hauling stuff back and forth between gates, stations and citadels. You'll find pilots running combat sites. You'll find mission runners. And more specifically and interestingly, you'll find battleships or capitals running level 4 or 5 missions. And these make for juicy kills, but you'll need combat scanner probes to scan them down. And you'll need a good scanner to scan them down quickly and finally for capital specifically expect to be dropped by defensive sinos with all sorts of firepower so be prepared so i hope you enjoyed this class and i hope i was able to reduce the complexity of low security space mechanics even for a little bit and i'm sure with enough experience and exposure you'll get the hang of it once again i'm professor academiac i hope to see you in our new bee friendly fleets in our classes and in eve university all the best and fly fun